Hey everyone, this is Chris, sometimes known as LOTR Deck Tech, and this week bringing you another new deck exploring some of the player cards that we just got with the Withered Heath. Uh, this deck is a style of deck that I have always loved. It is a three hero secrecy deck with Glorfindel, Biffer, and Theodrid. We are going to have a ton of resources over the course of the game, and we're going to use them to power out some big, expensive allies. And a lot of them are going to be unique, which hopefully lets you take a guess as to what the new card is that we are going to be focusing on. It's the Arkenstone. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about these guarded player cards right now. Uh, you have to play them sort of when the time is right, and sometimes they end up biting you a little bit if the card that they pull out of the deck is really bad. You can't cheat them in after quest resolution to sort of better prepare for the following round. You have to drop them during planning. But that should be all right. We should be able to get a ton of willpower from the card once we have claimed it. Uh, and even though this is solo and we won't be able to pass it off to somebody else, that is okay with me. As for the quest that we are playing this week, I am going up against the same Wizard's Quest deck as the previous video. Uh, I wanted to give this one another shot. The Outlands deck that we played last week gets off to a really aggressive start and ends up questing for entirely too much. And I want to see how much harder or easier or different the Wizard's Quest feels when you aren't playing such a ridiculous deck into it. The other new card that we are testing out that is not in my opening hand is the, now I've forgotten its name, but I'll, it'll be on the screen right down there, so you'll be able to see it in a second. Uh, zero cost attachment that goes on a location and drops your threat by three. Uh, in this deck, it is not, I think, going to be as good as Elrond's Council, but a little bit of threat reduction can go a long way in a three hero secrecy deck, especially when a lot of the enemies in the game have a little bit of a low threat cost. Like this Howling Warg here that engages at 23. Uh, my threat is 20 right now, so we're gonna have to deal with him soon. Uh, so we shall see if that makes much of a difference. And with that, let's get into the game. All right. First turn, everyone gets their resources. Draw one additional card. I like that one actually quite a bit. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. Spend one off of Glorfindel for a Light of Valinor. We pass this one from Theodred onto Biffer so that I can play a Gleowine. Uh, drawing cards, always a big deal for any sort of secrecy deck. Uh, and I think his one willpower will come in handy this round. Yeah, let's leave it like this for now. All right, so we're gonna send characters to the quest. With Gleowine, I have a total of seven. Theodred puts the resource on himself, and I will immediately use it to play Timely Aid. One, two, three, four, five. All right, there it is, Woodman's Clearing. It's a Farmir. Uh, yeah, we basically have to take Faramir here. He is way too good not to take, and the rest of these will get shuffled back into my deck. Uh, I think Furial is maybe the only ally that I would have much rather seen, uh, but Faramir is going to give us a ton of willpower as we progress through this quest, and he gives us the option to sort of save questing this round in case I reveal a high threat card off of the encounter deck. So all in all, not a bad choice. Uh, we could also use him to defend the Howling Warg if we need that or another small enemy. So all things told, we are pretty good. Staging for the round is Dark Bats. All right, I sent seven. Up against seven is a push. 
We don't have to do anything this round, which I am okay with. So let's travel to the Watched Path. And I am forced to engage the Dark Bats. I think that's okay. I'm not going to engage the Howling Warg because I don't have to yet. Uh, and like I said, I will have Faramir defend against these bats, so they're probably going to go away. Yes, Faramir will take one damage, thanks to that Pine Slopes, which I am glad to see discarded. Uh, and now the Dark Bats are going to turn into a Twilight Hall. I don't think I saw this one the last time. That card is gross. Uh, and it is currently a one, two, three, five threat location. Uh, so this is gonna be bad, but we will do our best. All right, refresh. Everyone stands back up. Actually having Faramir will be a big help because he will contribute four willpower. Get my resources for the round. Draw my card. That card is not immune to player card effects, which I think is something that is worth remembering. Uh, so I'm gonna take this resource from Phaedrid, put it on Biffer, and I will spend two for an Asphaloth. Uh, this is one of the main reasons that this style is so good. Uh, Asphaloth allows you to deal with a ton of problematic cards without any issues whatsoever. Uh, and we are going to commit to the quest. Three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, I pretty much have to make it 11, so we're just gonna do that right now. I have sent 11 up against seven in the staging area. I only have to make one. Okay, Restless Hunters is going to surge into Under the Shadow. As well, uh, slide that in up there. All right, Under the Shadow, Doomed One, ticks me up to 22 threat. That means I cannot play more than one card each phase. I think I'm okay with that. So all right, I sent 11 up against seven is four progress. One clears the Watchful Path, which discards this enemy, great, uh, and places three on the quest. So at this point, I will use Asphaloth to put two on the Twilight Hall, and I will travel there because I basically cannot leave that threat in the staging area any longer. Uh, I forgot my Theodred resource, which was going to go on Glorfindel. So I have a three cost ally in my hand in spirit. So I'll be able to play that next round. At the end of combat, I have to put a damage on a character, which I guess is gonna go on Glaywine. Uh, that sniper is gonna be annoying for a really long time. I don't have Gandalf or anything like that. No forced engagement effects. Uh, but if I get a Warden of Healing anytime soon, we will be able to deal with that. So let's just try it. All right, refresh ticks me up to 23. I draw a card, three and a one and a one. Well, I like resourceful, but it doesn't help me out right now. Elra here might though with his two willpower. Question is now, is it worth it to use the Arkenstone? I do have one in my hand. Uh, I don't have to make that much progress right now, even though this is a six threat location, we've traveled to it, so it's fine. Uh, let me Glaywine to draw another card. Well, I can't use the Woodman's Clearing now because uh, that location can have attachments and that one is immune to player card effects. So let me play the Arkenstone. So one off of Theodrid, pop out the Arkenstone. 
is a pine slopes. That's not too bad, actually. Uh, I might as well put the woodman's clearing on this pine slopes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to really differentiate the guard and the attachment there, so we're just going to deal with it. And I actually feel okay about that right now. So, let's quest. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to save Farmir right now. I don't need to clear this location immediately. So, I have eight up against six. And I will reveal a Howling Warg. Kind of annoying, but okay. Uh, I have to discard this card, not. All right, so my eight up against seven is one progress. That is fine with me. Don't want to reveal another card yet. So I can ask Philoth to put two on the Pine Slopes. Uh, I just realized I have to deal with two of these wargs this turn. Which is, is maybe not so great. But let's find out. All right, two wargs come down. All of these things shift over. We get a shadow and a shadow. Uh, Farmer will defend warg number one. Again, we get plus one, so Farmer takes one point of damage. Uh, he is basically not defendable anymore. And Howling War number two, I will take undefended for two damage. Uh, let's put that on Theodrid. And I can't kill one of the wargs yet. So here's two damage from Glorfindel. It's just twos all around. Uh, but maybe that's okay. Pick up to 24 in the refresh phase. I screwed up. I couldn't have played this Woodman's Clearing. Could I have even played the Arkenstone? Probably not. Uh, but I don't entirely remember, so we're just going to leave that one. And refresh. Everyone stands back up. All my characters are here. Uh, I would have had to do one more damage thanks to that sniper. So let's put that damage on Biffer. And then we get resources two and one and one. And I'm pretty sure I forgot the Theodred resource two. So let's just mulligan that whole round. Draw my card. That's Asphaloth. That doesn't help. Uh, let me Glaywine to draw one. Ooh. Oh, that's a challenge. Uh, let me save Darren's runes. I will use my planning to play Woodman's Clearing uh, because I intend to Asphaloth this location away now. So, Pine Slopes goes away. I get the Arkenstone attached to a hero. And now all of my characters have plus one willpower. Woodman's Clearing triggers, dropping my threat down to 21. Maybe that was bad, but I'm not super worried about it. Let's go to questing. There's three in the staging area against me. Uh, I'm going to send six, and I will put the resource on Theodred. And I can use all the rest of these characters for combat, and I should be able to take out at least one of the wargs. So I don't... Oh. And questing means I can play Darren's runes. Draw myself two. <laughs> That's fun. Discard this extra Light of Valinor. All right. So I sent four, five, six up against three. Four, five. All right. Up against five, I will make one progress, and that is totally fine. Uh, cannot engage or don't want to engage these enemies. So let me. Oh, this is risky. 
Uh, Biffer will, so this could get plus two for that one. All right, Elra here is gonna defend this warg. Discard an attachment from the defending character. All right, it's fine. Elra here does take one damage though. I really need that Warden of Healing soon. Hmm. And I'm gonna take this one undefended again. Uh, attacking enemy gets plus one, so that is three undefended damage. Unfortunately, that is a pretty significant hit to my ability to take these blows, but use Biffer and Faramir to kill this first Howling Warg. And Glorfindel will put two damage on this Howling Warg. And I have to put one more damage on a character now at the end of combat. So we'll put that on, let's do Theodrid actually. Uh, I've got a bit of buffer coming, so no worries there. I just really like a Warden of Healing soon. So refresh, ticks up, readies all these cards. I put my hand right in the way of Glorfindel. So one damage on Biffer. All my allies stand up. All right, 22 threat is not bad. Staging area is okay. Draw my card, get my resources. Here's three on Biffer, three on Theodrid. Uh, let me use Glaywine right now to draw a card. Quick Beam is good but I would much rather pay three for Elidan. Uh, so now the brothers are gonna massively assist my combat potential. And I can't play any other cards right now, so we're just not gonna bother. Uh, there is five in the staging area, so I will send six. Um, Let's make it nine with Biffer. And I'll put the resource on Glorfindel. Yeah, all right, so I sent nine up against five. Up against nine. Uh, so if I, yeah, let's use Faramir. Uh, this is gonna make three progress. So two on the location and one on the quest which clears the Twilight Hall, which reveals one encounter card per player, which is Eastern Crows. I don't think I've seen an Eastern Crows yet, but maybe I'm wrong. I have not seen Eastern Crows yet, so it doesn't surge, uh, but it does mean I'm gonna have to deal with an enemy this round. I will travel to Pine Slopes. Uh, do I do you want to do that? Uh, you know what? Let's travel to Rosgabel. Gonna need to do it eventually, and the extra resources will come in handy. Plus, I can spend Asphaloth to put two on Pine Slopes and clear it out before questing next round. Alright, so engagement. I have to take these Eastern Crows. Get some shadow effects. They are Unfortunately, not an orc. <sighs> All right. So Elra here is going to defend this warg with three defense. There's an Eastern Crows. He takes no damage. Um, this Elidan will defend the Eastern Crows. Okay, it's Eastern Crows all the way down. Elidan will take one. And Glorfindel will kill this Howling Warg. So we are in a little bit better shape than we were before. Oh, I forgot to draw my card and get my resources. Oh, okay, now we're in great shape. Sorry, you can't see my hand, but I just drew Joubert, so life is pretty good for now. Uh, end of combat, I have to do a damage, thanks to the Goblin Sniper. Need that Warden of Healing very soon. So, refresh ticks up to 23. Everyone and everything stands back up. All right, 
and I will draw a card and gain some resources. Okay, and during the resource phase, I will spend one for Heed the Dream. So look at the top one, two, three, four, five cards. None of those are Warden of Healing, but uh, let's take Darren's Runes as my choice from there. Uh, and I will spend the three leadership resources to search the entire deck to pull out one of three Wardens of Healing. And then we shuffle. And I know I said that we drew Jubair, which was going to more or less ensure that we were totally fine. But I think at this point that the Warden of Healing is just such a big deal that Jubair will have to wait around. All right. I only play one card in planning because this effect sucks. So we're gonna move one over to Biffer, spend two, we'll get a Warden of Healing. Squish everything up a little bit. All right, let's move to questing. I play Darren's Runes immediately, draw myself two cards. Those are some good ones. And I will discard and as Asphaloth. Yes, that is what we're gonna do. Uh, and I will use this Asphaloth to clear out this Pine Slopes before we ever have to deal with it. And at this point, I will send three, four, five, six, six up against four. Um, could make it eight up against four. There's basically nothing in the deck that is going to do more than four, aside from maybe the pine slopes. So let's do it. All right, I'll send six up against four. Howling Warg, discards. Sorcerer's Tower is not a Warg, thankfully. All right, so my six up against five is just enough to clear Rosgabel, turn it into a Rider of Mirkwood. I can deal with that. Uh, I can't travel anywhere, so we're just going to engage this Howling Warg and leave everything else in the staging area. Shadow, Shadow. Uh, before anything else happens, Warden of Healing is going to heal one two points of damage, so I can defend Faramir if I need to. Elra here is very safe. Uh, so Elra here is gonna defend this Howling Warg. Either reveal an encounter card or treat this attack as undefended. All right, so I have to reveal an encounter card. Dogolder Beastmaster, okay. This, this is a thing that can be survived. All right, Faramir will defend these Eastern Crows Attacking enemy gets plus one, so he's gonna take one damage. All right, and now Eladan will kill an Eastern Crows and Glorfindel plus Biffer is enough to kill the Howling Warg. And at this point, I might as well use Glaywine to draw myself a card. Not bad. All right, that is the end of that round, uh, except I have to put one point of damage on someone. Put on Elra here again. Take up to 24 threat, so we refresh. All right, uh, draw my card, gain my resources for the round. Okay, so at this point we have a lot of enemies and not much of anything else. So I think this is the round where I will play a Jubair. Uh, I have an Elrond's Council in hand right now for the quest phase. 
and a whole bunch of other attachment -y sort of things and allies that I just can't play more than one of per round. So let's commit to the quest. I am up against eight, so this is a little bit challenging. Send three, sorry, four, seven, eight, nine. Uh, let's send Glaywine, 11. And I will use Elrond's Council to boost up Theodrid and make it 12. So my 12 willpower and 21 threat now up against eight in the staging area. Oh, when revealed, that is an additional eight threat. So I have to tick up to 25. Not make any progress, which is actually probably fine. I have a couple resourcefuls in my hand, but I don't think I'm going to play them anytime soon. So, let me deal with one of these enemies. Um, do I want the Beastmaster? I don't think so. So I'm going to take this Hunting Warg. Gages a player, it makes an immediate attack. All right, so we're gonna have Jubair defend this attack, discard this shadow card, so that that ability does not get a chance to trigger and Jubair takes no damage. Then we move into the combat phase and I have to take another attack, but for this one, I have a Warden of Healing to heal one. Let's actually take one off of Glorfindel this round, two. All right, and this time Elra here with his three defense is going to defend. Three defense and three attack is totally fine. So here's three, four, five, six to kill the hunting warg. And I keep having to double check Eladan and Elra here because I keep not being sure which one of them gets the buff. But I think I've done it right so far. All right, uh, still can't use Asphaloth, so we're just gonna refresh. And I will draw a card. That's an interesting one. Get my resources. I think I forgot a Theodred resource last round, but that's okay. All right, so. Here is the plan. This space is still visible. We spend two for Quick Beam. I forgot to put a damage on a character last round, so that would have been, uh, I guess here again. Uh, quick Beam is going to, you know what? Let's have Quick Beam come in exhausted. I don't need him immediately, and I think that will be fine. All right, let's go to questing. I have six in the staging area. So I'm gonna send nine again and I can make it 12. I'm going to put the Theodred resource on, put it on Glorfindel this round. Uh, and I'm going to play Timely Aid in the quest phase because it's an action and it means I can get an ally out despite this under the shadow nonsense. So, one, two, three, four, five. And all the allies in this deck are expensive enough that five or four resources is totally worth it. Uh, let's get Halberad. The other option was Northern Tracker, but there are so few locations in play right now that I don't think I'm gonna need the tracker's location progress before Halberad's willpower. And they're not unique, which is kind of boring when you have the Arkenstone in play. So, all right, I sent nine to the quest up against six. All right, nine against eight is one progress. Uh, let's use Farmir to make it 12 up against eight for four progress. Gets me to eight of 10 on the quest. Uh, do I want to optionally engage the Beastmaster? I don't think so. 
So I'm just going to take these forest flies. Before anything happens, I will heal one. Let's heal Glorfindel again in case I have to take undefended attacks. All right, Jubera will defend the forest flies, discarding the shadow car. He takes no damage, of course. Uh, and I need seven to kill the flies, so there's a Glorfindel and two elf brothers, which is more than enough. Uh, my threat needs to go one higher because of that attack, but no big deal there. And that's it for this round. Uh, but again, I have to put a point of damage on for the Goblin Sniper. We are slowly clearing it out, but not, not very quickly. All right, draw my card, get my resources. I can already tell that this video is quite a bit longer than the last one. From a location in play. Um, all right, I'm gonna spend one this round for a Hennemarth River song who is sticking off the edge of the table. So just gonna bring him back over here. I do also have Gonbury Gone in my hand, which is great, except for the fact that there are no locations in play. So committing to the quest, send my nine again. Uh, I might as well Hennemarth to look at this card. It's a location. All right, so I've sent nine, we're up against nine, and I can make it 12, so that should be fine. All right, it's the Warg's Glade, so that, like I said, ends up adding up to nine, so my 12 is three progress, which clears Radagast's request, getting rid of Under the Shadow, finally. And we are on 2A, one, two, three, four. Looking for a card that costs one or less. Yeah, let's take this location. There's plenty of enemies. Shuffle that back up. To B, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a location with cost two or less. And I add a resource to gonna keep going until I find a good one, like this one, the Sorcerer's Tower. Okay, and I don't shuffle this back into the encounter set, so I need to make progress in order to get to the Sorcerer's Tower, etc., etc., etc. Oof. Okay, uh, let me travel to Hunter's Lookout, making that my active location. Uh, this forces the Rider of Mirkwood to make an immediate attack against me, which I will defend with poor old Glaewine. Someone's gonna die. All right, a Shadow Chain. Engage with an Orc enemy and a Warg enemy, I am not. It's okay. Rider of Mirkwood just Brutally destroyed Glaywine. There are no more Glaywines in the deck, so he is gone forever. I'm okay with that. Uh, if I want to optionally engage, I have to take two defenses and put a damage on a character, which I think is fine, and I need the threat out of the staging area. So let me Dogolder Beastmaster and Necromancer's Warg. Uh, I guess this is the combo that is supposed to have the Necromancer's Warg shadow effect. Interesting. Uh, I only get one shadow effect this round on the Beastmaster. So that's actually kind of fun. All right. Uh, Jubair will def uh, I have to put a damage on a character, which will go over here on Quick Beam. Jubair defends the Beastmaster. He's going to take one damage and discard this shadow card. Uh, I will have Elra here defend this warg and take nothing. And I need three damage to kill a warg. And two, four, five, six, seven, eight is enough to kill the Beastmaster. 
So I only a little bit hosed by locations right now. Uh, all right. Horn of Healing is going to take off these two points of damage, and the Goblin Sniper will do one to Halberad. Take up to 29, some million rounds into this quest. At least I can play as many cards as I want right now. All right, draw my card, I will gain my resources. Four, one, two. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, none of these are immune to player card effects, except for this one. Uh, so I do actually have a way to start clearing them, which is good. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna spend four for a Northern Tracker. I think my next play is Heed the Dream. But I'm gonna do that in questing so that I can pay the kicker with Theodred if I need it. And I'm gonna have to shuffle this, so let's do that now. While I count things up, uh, there is four, that, sorry, that should be a three now. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 in the staging area. My threat is getting a little high, but I do have a massive board of allies ready to deal with most attacks. Wargs are going to gain Surge. Treacheries are going to gain Doomed. <laughs> this is a, an interesting setup. But at least the Hunter's Lookout is out of the staging area to avoid raising my threat even more. All right, so like I said, up against 12 means I have to quest a little hard. So three, so four, seven, eight, nine, yet again, uh, 10 Northern Tracker. I'm gonna use Hennemarth to look at this. It's a Pine Slopes, so it's going to be 16. I have sent 10. Um, yeah, we will, uh, I'm gonna make it 16 with those two allies and Faramir will give me enough to make this progress. I can't engage any of these enemies. So 16, 22, 23, 24, because I can't use any of these characters for anything else. Faramir makes it 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, not that one, 31, 32, 33, up against 12, 16. Uh, there is one of these on the Warg's Glade. Uh, so my 30-something clears the Hunter's Lookout, puts the five progress that I need on a fork in the road, and allows me to travel to the Sorcerer's Tower. I believe it is still immune to player card effects, which kind of sucks, but I can ask Philoth to put two more progress on the Warg's Glade, uh, which is going to give me a warg next round, but that's okay. You can see all of these characters. Uh, Warden of Healing is going to... Heal this one off of Gorfindel, and this one off of Eladan. And the Goblin Sniper is going to put one on Elra here. Tick up to 30. Everyone has one damage. It's just the rule now. All right, draw my card. Ooh, that's a good one too. I completely forgot to heed the dream. I got distracted by the sheer amount. So this should actually be four on Theodrid. I did what I said, uh, which is actually pretty good. All things considered, I will spend two for a second Warden of Healing. Uh, and I am going to spend four for an Elder here. <sighs> Might as well stack up on this Northern Tracker for now. <laughs> do I want to pop the Warg's Glade right now? I think I do. 
All right, so Warg's Glade is going to go away, which means we search for a Warg enemy. Like that one, that'll work. Is it revealed? Uh, no, so that does not end up happening. My opponents are making bad choices based on the random shuffle of the deck, but that is fine by me. All right, moving on to questing. Hennemarth is gonna look at this and tell me that it's going to surge, so I have no information. I think I'll be okay. Uh, my swarm is a little gigantic. Yeah, all right, so. These characters, we have nine again. Uh, I have to deal with an enemy this round, so I can't send everyone, so nine. Plus another six is 15. Uh, might as well send Northern Tracker, make it 16, and put one progress on this Pine Slopes. All right, so 16 up against five, six, seven, eight. Only need to make four progress. Right, I knew that was going to surge. Ooh, Necromancer's Warg. So up against 10, I make six progress, which clears the Sorcerer's Tower. Uh, shuffle and discard until you get a treachery, and then reveal that treachery. So here we go. All right. <laughs> that actually is much better now. One damage to a questing character is not that hard. So here we go. Northern Tracker, you take one. Uh, and we're done with willpower, so that doesn't matter at all. I will travel to Pine Slopes. Or, hang on. Forgot, I have to advance to stage three, and then I'll travel to Pine Slopes. All right, Necromancer's Tower. Search the top five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's do Beastmaster. Having to deal with even more enemies is annoying. Uh, that means I'll have to kill this Necromancer's War twice effectively, so maybe that's worth it. But I do also only have to make 20 points of progress on the quest in order to win. So let's travel to Pine Slopes, raising my threat to 31. Uh, this is now a four-threat Rider of Mirkwood that I could engage and kill if I wanted to. But instead, I'm just going to take, uh, I'll put this one on the quest, a couple of wargs, which require me to put a damage on a character, which can go on Halberad over here. Uh, before we do any defending, let's heal four points of damage, one, two, three, four. So now my Wardens of Healing are gonna help us clean up much quicker. Uh, but Jubair will defend against the Howling Warg, discarding its shadow. It's okay, because its shadow is nothing. Uh, Elra here will defend against this Warg. Either revealing counter card or treat this attack as undefended. Uh, I will actually just take two damage undefended. At this point, that is way easier to deal with than more cards. But here's three to kill this warg, and two, five to kill the howling warg. And I think we're gonna be okay. Tick up to 32 threat. Stand them all up. I'm gonna spread out a little bit now because I don't think I'm going to need uh, one more damage thanks to the Goblin Sniper. All right, like I said, I don't think I'm gonna need to fight any more enemies right now. I only have to make uh, 24 progress. I should have asked Faloth through this last round to be at three of four, and I'll probably use Asphaloth on it again. Yeah, all right. Draw my card. Well, Treebeard, you are late to the party. Get my resources. 
Honestly, none of these cards do very much right now. Aside for Gonbury Gone. So he will actually be three willpower if I don't Asphaloth. So I think that is what we're gonna do. Uh, in anticipation of some nonsense, I'm gonna heal both Wardens of Healing. Uh, there's the Treachery. I think there might be another one that will damage a character and reduce the willpower of damaged characters. I don't want that. So we're gonna quest. Three, two from this and one from the Arkenstone, plus the nine that I normally send from those guys is 12. Uh, 13, 14 with Hennemarth, 20 with allies over here, 26, uh, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then Faramir is going to make it 32, 33, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 43 up against 8. I have to discard until I get a treachery. Sooner or later, there we go. All right, Wade Down is going to exhaust Glorfindel. My, my 42, I think, is still safe. Let's move my hand out of the way. <laughs> and there's our reveal. Under the Shadows is a doomed one, taking me up to 33 threat. And my 42 willpower has completely annihilated this. Clearing out the location and making more than enough progress on the Tower of Sorcery for me to win at the Wizard's Quest. Uh, that was pretty good. Uh, this Goblin Sniper has been really annoying. I'm sort of missing the Corset Gandalf from this deck. Uh, and I didn't get my resource acceleration early, but as you can see, with a low threat deck, it sort of has big allies and a little bit of a head start. Uh, thanks to things like Timely Aid and Asphaloth. Oh, you don't really need too much resource acceleration. And I think the Arkenstone really did pull it home for us. Uh, a little dicey when I played it. I still think I completely screwed up that round, so if you're going to asterisk this game, that's fine. <laughs> Pretty sure we would have been okay if I'd waited around for that too. So yeah, uh, once again, I have filled up way too much of my table with allies. This is it's a big mess. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.